I'm gonna tell you why your back hurts right now. Right now. I'm Danny of RxFit, owner, operator. This is Bobby Bones, my model, all right? We're covering why your back hurts, essentially, the main reason. I'm gonna give you a quick anecdote. A few years ago, I fell off a roof. I landed on a beam uh, that was, you know those beams that surround the trees that hold all the soil in? They're above ground like soil holders. I don't even know what they are. But it was a wooden beam. I fell off the roof and landed on my spine and hit the ground. And luckily I like flopped. I didn't like resist it. So I didn't break anything. I didn't hurt anything. But I did have a massive adhesion uh, in my right QL, right? And by the way, I just guessed at this. I think the attachment point's actually under this last rib. But for, for ease of use, I, uh, <laughs> I just put it there for the tape. Uh, so I, I adhesed this right QL here, and meaning that it like compressed really, really, really tight here and causing compression all on the right side of my, my vertebrae. Uh, that's not that intense of an injury. It just means that like every time I squat, my right side is dominant and leans to that side to protect it. And because it's everything, my muscles are essentially uh, neuromuscularly activate stronger and tighten to my right side. And if you haven't seen our video on stability and neuromuscular activation, go watch that right now uh, because it explains a lot of what that activation is and why it happens. So. That's what happened. And if you have low back pain, I'll show you why it happens and how we can relieve that. Right now, on Bobby Bones, I'm gonna demonstrate why, and then we'll go to the gym after this, and I'll show you how to relieve it. So, the right QL. That's what the issue for me, but it could be either side for you. Um, and fact is, you, it might even be both, because you sit a lot, and when you sit, all right, Bobby, up, there we go. When you sit, like so, and unfortunately, uh, Bobby's hips don't move very well. He was not a fan of Shakira growing up. So he's, he's pretty, pro, pretty frozen in place here, if you can tell. But I, I, essentially, what happens is your hips rotate a little bit when you sit, uh, pulling on your QLs. And if you notice, see how this, the, there's a little slack there in the tape? So this is what's neuromuscularly activated all the time when you're sitting. And up here, these are really loose, so they're not activated, right? And this is what, for hours and hours a day, because uh, that's what matters, how often you're doing it, how much time do the muscles spend in that position, not if you work them out as much. And then when you do anything that places force on the body, like a squat, let's say I go, it's squat day, and Bobby's here, and he's standing up, and he goes down, 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 with, and he has heavy weight across the bars, right, right across here, and he's squatting, 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 and he's leaning forward, his back is carrying most of that load because it's used to being activated for this eight hours sitting in a chair, and it compresses even harder and harder and harder with all that force. That's a pretty good squat, actually, Bobby. Not bad. Um, that it compresses the spine a lot more and a load gets taken there. So when you feel pain in the low back, it's not necessarily because you have like injured vertebrae, your herniated disc, or anything like that. It's really just because it's muscle, think of it like a very severe cramp. That's what an adhesion is. It's just an com intense compression. Uh, seizes up here, and then you stand up after carrying that load, and the, and the QL did all the, like a lot of that work. So you have to correct this problem at the same time that uh, you engage this over here, right? Let me give you a visual representation. I always like to talk about with my team that it's like concrete, right? Think about grabbing concrete in liquid form and then it solidifies, the pain was intense, you know, like it becomes very hard and it's hard to change. If it was possible, what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this already concrete and back into liquid, right? Make it very mobile and loose and fluid and then re-stabilize it as hard concrete, right? Then, in the same workout, you want to engage the rectus abdominis because this is the part that's gonna, you're gonna turn this very loose, potentially flabby, unused muscle uh, into concrete, so it stabilizes the front part here, right? And when it does that, it'll take a load off the low back. When you do that, you can take more of a load, and then this will get longer, right? The muscle will stabilize in a longer position because this guy is, is pulling you forward, um, and then it'll re-solidify into concrete in a longer position. So you have the here to here, right? And then once you're here, you're able to take a, when you, the next time you do that squat, you do a 500 pound squat, you can carry the load here in your rectus, and in your QL balanced together instead of just in the low back. Does that make sense? You have to nod. Okay, cool, thanks. All right, so now that you got that, let's go to the gym and show you how you can fix that. So, okay, here we are. Now, Few movements we're gonna do in the gym. By the way, gym environment. I hope we're getting used to it. This is this is the area. The little astral turf, some equipment. You know, get it. Gym environment. Some cars. 
Uh, a couple of these movements I did say out right out of the gymnastics playbook. First one, Jefferson curl. The idea here is that you're trying to create a chain of events from the heel all the way up into the base of the skull. All right. So it's very important you go slow and think about each muscle connection along the back of the spine. And this is going to be great for opening that QL like we talked about earlier, because the QL will probably, if, if you're having these back issues, will be the tightest part on you. So you have to take it slow when you get to this part. What you're going to do is you're going to hold the weight in front of you. First start off, I like to... Uh, pull back as far as I can. Essentially, I'm exaggerating in the opposite position. So I'm pulling my shoulders back and with my chin up. And then I immediately tuck the chin, push the shoulders as far as possible and make a C out of your, your spine, your back and shoulders. Push it out as far as you can and then start to tuck your vertebrae as a string of pearls are going over each other. Like you're tucking a string of pearls around in circles. All right, so boom. And then one by one. And I already feel my QL, my right one, the one I was talking about that has a problem. Start to resist. I'm going down. Nice and slow breathing. Now I feel it in my hips and hamstrings and calves. That's good. Hold the bottom position for a couple of seconds. Breathe and then slowly pull yourself back in through it. Nice and slow. And then exaggerate the opposite position again. So you'll do that about five to eight times with moderate weight. Uh, I'm using a 45, which is still a little light for me. I like to go about 80, 90. Because the better I can do that, the more what I, mobility, by def, as defined by RX Fit, which is increasing range of motion under tension, uh, will be far more established when I increase that weight there as I work up to it. So still on the releasing the QL part. Remember, we're turning that concrete into liquid. So that was the first move. I do about five to eight reps of those. I'll come over here, and I'm going to show you how to do a kettlebell windmill, focusing for me on my right QL, because it's the one I want to think about. So toes forward, wide stance. I punch this weight overhead. From here, I'm going to come down and aim for my left toe and balance the weight on my arm. I'm not lifting it, I'm not lifting the weight. It's locked out arm and positioned behind my head, so I'm just balancing it. I doesn't feel like I'm even lifting it, it's just kind of there. Right? And then as I go down, legs stay locked out. I'm going down, down, down. The weight stays behind me, and I'm going for that toe here. And I feel that right heel right now, it's just really pulling. Right? I'm going to go further. Nice. And as you get better at this, you can either increase the weight or exaggerate the position. Go further down or come to the center, which really causes a twist from the spine to the QL. I mean, to the spine, QL, to hips. Because what matters is that if these are my shoulders and these are my pelvis, I'm gonna, this is called spinal flossing, it's when I twist. So shoulders are crossing like this. Here, this is normal. And then I turn this way without my hips moving, that's spinal flossing. It's really healthy for the low back, right? Because you're kind of like pulling on it mobility wise without trying to put too much pressure on the low back. Now I'm gonna show you a side angle of the same exact movement. Toes forward, locked out arm, and push my hips back, down, here, 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 there, and touch the ground. Cool. All right. Always think about the muscle that you're trying to mobilize too. Think about it because it'll help with the neuromuscular activation of that muscle. And in this case, you want to mobilize it. You don't want to contract it like you, we were talking about earlier, which caused the problem to begin with. Oh, the mic's moving around. <laughs> now it's acting like a third nipple. <laughs> All right, so the techniques I just showed you there are a way to increase mobility, which is a element of strength. So increasing the range of motion, right? We're increasing the range of motion, how far it can go while under tension with that weight, right? So we're making it stronger, but in longer positions, which is what you want in order to increase Again, the mobility, the range of motion of that muscle, and you're making it stronger, but just in a longer position, right? So if you're just trying to get a quick fix real fast, cause like, oh, my back hurts, but I'm in the middle of my work day, find a door ledge, you know, like you can door away like this. You put your hand in hand here, or so I'm gonna use a demonstrate with this. So ignore this, my tape fell off cause I'm sweaty, but you know, what are you gonna do? I live in Austin, Texas. All right, so feet together. Here, get close to the position, close to the bar. Alex just knocked over some lights. <laughs> Hold the bar and lean away while keeping everything locked out here. And you'll feel it run through the back of your rib cage. That's good. If you still don't feel it in your QL, keep it, go up higher with this arm. So right now I'm only holding here. But let's say I was on a doorway. I would grab up here 
and then come across, then come across, all right? And there, I feel it right there, a lot, okay? So the higher this arm goes, the more you can get that pull down here where that showed you earlier with the skeleton with Bobby Bones. All right, so now that we've figured out how to turn concrete into the liquid, right? Now we're gonna turn that liquid and the other part, this liquid, into concrete. And then let it set. So, uh, this is another one taken out of the gymnastics playbook. It's referred to as a hollow body, but this is modified. So hollow body is a staple of gymnastics, essentially. It's teaching you how to use everything from your fingertips down to your toes. Whoop, let me turn a little bit. What I'm gonna do, a normal hollow body is locked out here, toes pointed, hands pointed, and then you lift up off the ground, pressing your low back into the ground. So what I'm gonna modify is specifically for the rectus abdominis that I wanna strengthen today. So I'm gonna anchor myself with the kettlebell, lock my legs out, completely flex everything from the waist down, so it's locked out completely. My arms will be locked out as well, keeping the biceps by the ears at all times. I don't wanna see any of this, all right? Locked out, and then see if my rib cage is up right now, that's intentional. I want my rib cage up, because that's where the rectus abdominis is, right? Here, down to here. And then I'm going to pull my rib cage down and press my low back into the ground. So up and then down. Open up again and then pull it again. Pull it down. All we're doing is working that rectus. So biceps by the ears, hands locked out, and pull up and then down. Right? So that's all we're doing here. And the more you do that, that you get tightening and tightening and tightening that muscles to help with that low back. Like I showed you your Bobby Bones, the both sides need to be balanced, and that's the part we're trying to balance here. All right? Once you've gotten there and you can notice getting stronger, start working on different ranges of motion because we don't work in just these neutral anterior positions with just facing forward. We do twisting a lot, right? And I already showed you the twisting with the strengthening portion for the QL, the mobility portion for the QL. So here, you would come up and slightly turn, rotate. Back down. And then up, and then slightly rotate to the other side. Back down, all right? So now we're working on what's referred to as a fascial line that comes across the body. We have not covered fascial lines yet, so don't memorize that. I'll cover that in a future video. But essentially, there are these lines of neuromuscular activation across the body that will help assist the muscular um, contractions, all right? But for now, that's all you need. Oh, oh I need to feel a little bit better, but I need to work on that a little bit more. Uh, so. Let's recap. You gotta release the QL if you're having low back pain, okay? So pull on it. Then, once you release it, you have to go the other side and tighten the rectus abdominis, like we did with Bobby Bones. Tighten here, loosen here. And then set them both. And that's when you wanna think about the muscles that you're using and get them to stay in that position. And that's what strength is good for. Strength can cause injuries when you're not thinking about what muscle you need to strengthen and why am I doing the Obama thing? <laughs> Throw him in the hand. Uh, stop. <laughs> uh, this is what's so important. This is what corrective fitness is all about. As you noticed, this today was about dissolving an injury, or a pain point, essentially. But if you work with a proper corrective fitness professional, you can actually get to your weight loss goals and your strength goals, your aesthetic goals, while basically rehabbing potential problems, right? And that's all we ever think about at RxFit, is like how to get you to your optimal point while treating anything that could be a problem while getting you to your goal. This is like a lot happening all the time, and that's why these modalities are so specific and defined, and I hope you enjoy them. Alex has the fun recording us here. Uh, go ahead and follow. We have a program coming out soon. It's a fitness masterclass, and it's gonna have all, all this content packed up in a nice little bow where it has like steps one through, I don't know, 100. I don't really don't know how many there are but they're all in, in order and it'll come with the exercises and the movements and everything in between. So go ahead and if you need to subscribe so that way you get notified of those. Uh, other than that, stick around. And if you have issue, other issues that are very common for in your life or your friends, uh, your circle, bring that up so I can approach those as well. Okay, next time. Oh, my legs. Oh, hey, is that homeboy? I think that is. <laughs>